Hi friends, welcome back to the Avocado Toast Budget. If you are new here, my name is Lexa, and today, if you've been here before, you might notice that we're in a different spot. This is like a different angle from where I normally film. Normally I film on that couch right there, but I just wanted to like be able to sit down at my desk today to film this video, so I decided to just put up my camera here. You get a lovely view of my laundry room, <laughs> but this is a much easier way for me to set up for these videos where I am recording my screen with YNAB. So today's video, I'm going to go through and budget our paychecks into YNAB inside of our joint account. If you don't know what YNAB is, it stands for You Need a Budget. It's the budgeting software that I use, and if you're completely new to YNAB, I will link some videos up here that are helpful helpful for beginners to YNAB, how to set up the budget, how to like understand how the system works, all of that. But otherwise today's video is just going to be us budgeting our paycheck. It's a little bit different than the way that I've done it in the past because now that I am self-employed I actually have a paycheck from the ATB and a paycheck from Liz's to budget on the same day. So we're going to go through show you how I budget multiple paychecks inside of our joint account at one time. But before we get into it make sure if you enjoy this video that you give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm, helps boost this video to the top, that way more people can find this content. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so to be perfectly honest with you guys, I have not been keeping up with our budget very well <laughs> compared to nor how I normally do. So before I even go in and put in our paychecks, I want to make sure that I reconcile everything. So you can see here, this is our joint account. Like we have $10 in to be budgeted. I can see that we don't have enough budgeted for our credit card. It looks like it's kind of missing from here, so I want to go through and just kind of fix all of this up. So, the first thing I'm going to do is cover this overspending right here. This is just signaling to me that I spent money that I didn't have in this category, and I specifically spent it on my credit card. So if I don't budget for this, I won't have enough money to pay off my credit card in full. So, I want to cover that spending, and I'm just going to cover it with what is up here and to be budgeted, because that works out pretty perfectly. So when I sit, when I hit cover this over spending with, it pulls up to be budgeted. I can just click on that and then it'll pull in the exact amount that I needed to cover that expense. So that leaves us with two cents up here. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that into our spare change category, which is just where we put any like odd amounts in to kind of help us save a little bit of money at a time inside of our joint account. So it looks like that fixed both the credit card issue and this dash pass issue. So that is good. It looks like this little dot right here tells me that inside of our joint checking account, I have a transaction that I need to approve. So I'm going to do that. It looks like I'm already good to go. So this little symbol is telling me I already put this transaction in, but because I have my accounts linked inside of YNAB, they automatically will track my bank accounts and what goes in and out of them. So if I manually put that in and it sees, oh, she manually put in an expense for Amazon, for cat litter, for $82.75, and now we're seeing this charge to Amazon for $82.75. I bet that this is the same one. And I just have to go in and say, yes, that's the same transaction, don't count it twice. So I click that, and we're good to go. So these check marks are telling me that the account, the amount that is in our account is the same amount that is in YNAB, so I'm good to go there. Now I need to go ahead and put in both of our paychecks. So because we're budgeting two different paychecks, I'm actually just gonna put both paychecks in at the same time. So if you don't know, the way that we do our joint account is we both put 30% of our income into our joint account. That joint account covers joint expenses, and then the rest of our income goes into our personal accounts. Those cover our personal separate expenses and all of our savings goals and stuff like that. So the amount that I'm putting in here is 30% of each of our paychecks. The first one I'm going to put in is Liz's paycheck. I just name it Liz Paycheck. <laughs> I always put inflows of cash in to be budgeted. And then for Liz's paycheck, it's 400. And then I'm gonna add another transaction. This is my paycheck, but I'm actually going to change this. Normally I put Lexa's paycheck and that was for my full-time job, but because this is from the ATB, I'm going to specify that. And that is going to be $600. So inflow to be budgeted, the ATB, click save. And then you'll see that's reflected here in our joint checking and it's reflected here in to be budgeted. So this is telling us this is how much money we still need to categorize. So today is the 15th. We're halfway through April 
and we are already budgeted through April so I'm actually just gonna click over here and look at what we need to budget in May it looks like many of our fixed expenses are already accounted for and budgeted for the green right here tells me I'm good I already have enough money for the goals that I set up for these the blue tells me that I still need to put money in so I know anywhere I see blue I need to go ahead and put more money in but because I have our specific goals set up inside of YNAP I know exactly how much I want to put into each category whether that is a fixed expense or a variable expense and I already have that set up so the cool part about YNAP is that I can come over here and click this check mark and then over here it'll show me that I'm underfunded by $569.91 and all that means is that I need this $569 to cover my expenses for the rest of May so our goal is to be as ahead in our budget as we possibly can so our goal is to be at least at all times a month ahead in our budget so I'm going to go ahead and click the underfunded button that way we are good to go on that Liz doesn't get paid for another two weeks I know that I have one more paycheck from my full-time job but then other than that the ATV won't pay us for another month. I'm just going to pay on a monthly cycle. Now, when I clicked this button, it went ahead and filled in all of my categories. And it showed me up here that I still have $430 that I need to budget. So looking at my budget, there's a couple of different things that I want this money to do for us. One is that I want it to start covering some of June's rent because I know that that is a big expense. It's a good chunk of our budget. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put $200 toward June's rent that way at least like part of it is covered so we're not trying to fund that all with one paycheck but on top of that one of our big goals right now is that we want to go on vacation Liz and I have never been on a true vacation together we've been together for about four years and um, we've gone to visit family but we've never just been on like a relaxing couples vacation together so that's one of our really big goals so I'm going to go ahead and on top of the $50 I've already put in April I am going to add another $200 to that. So that went from to be budgeted, added an extra $200 in here. So $250 in total is what I've budgeted in April for that goal so far. And then over here, this $1,000 is telling me that's how much I have in this category to spend because we haven't spent really any money from this category yet. And then I need to decide what I want to do with these last $30. So I'm thinking again, since we're trying to get a little bit more ahead in our budget, I could go ahead and just put two, like $30 back into rent. It's pretty much the same thing, but I like to see more things covered. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and fund my Amazon Prime because I know that's only $6.88. I have all the amounts written here just so I can easily see how much we have to spend in each one of these categories. I'm also going to cover our ring subscription since I know I have enough money for that here. And then maybe our toggle insurance. Actually, I'll do pets best since that's kind of first up here. And then that leaves us with $1.73. So again, you could just put that money into rent, but my mind likes to see more blue or more green on the page. So I just wanted to go ahead and do that. And then this last little bit, I am just going to add to our spare change category. And then my setup will show me it's green, it has zero dollars, that means that I have given every single dollar a job. So that is how I go in and kind of decide where I'm going to put all of my money. I get questions sometimes about why we budget ahead. That just kind of acts as our buffer or our emergency fund. So rather than having like one category that has a specific amount for an emergency fund inside of our budget we just budget ahead because then in theory if something happened to our income we know that if something happened we could at least get through the end of april beginning of may and honestly if we cut back even more and we didn't put money toward our savings goals and all of that we could probably get through the month of june as well if we move some money around so that gives us a good idea of how much of a buffer that we have in our budget you could totally just have a line for emergency fund and you don't touch it this just works better for us in the way that our minds work so that is it for how i budget our joint account for both liz's paycheck and my paycheck from the atb i really hope that you enjoyed and learned something cool if you did make sure to give this video a big thumbs up it really helps out the youtube algorithm helps boost this video to the top that way more people can find this content and i will see you all next time bye